I'm at it. to foot.
Surrender. See their chances.
the ages. This is my time. One can't always be a gentleman. I used to be a gog at everything when I first walked in the sun. Perhaps I'm adjusting to this new life. It's when you use words like agog that I remember. <laughs> Who there, wanderer? Stay thy course a moment to indulge an old man. Elminster? The very same, Gale. And a fair bit miffed he is, too. Finding himself forced to expose his best pair of boots to so many miles of country road on your behalf. Originally, Shadowdale. Lately, the fanciest inns of Waterdeep. Meet Elminster Ormar, a good friend of mine, but rather more significantly, he's the most famed and respected wizard in the realms. Am I indeed? Most famed and respected errand boy, more like. I was bid to spare neither time nor my own self to find you. She sent me, Gail. You know of whom I speak. But why? Out with it, Elminster. Please. Young man, has your sojourn away from Waterdeep washed away your decorum as well as your patience? Nigh a ten day I've gone without honest fare, worthy of the name, drank naught, but what the sky entitled my thirst. Why? Some bread, cheese, and a cup of wine would appear unto me a feast. Surely you will begrudge me a mite of rest and repast before I get, get out with it. Oh, for the love of... Uh, well, this way, then. 
Hmm. To your camp. Oh, don't dawdle now, lad. You're the one who's in such a frightful hurry. Oh, nigh on 13 centuries old and he still thinks with his stomach. We'd best follow and see if he's more disposed to speak plainly once it's stopped its grumbling. Wise choice. Better to indulge your curiosity than Elminster's appetite. Mm, yes, what a delightful wedge of old as Turin that was. Doesn't do to parlay on an empty stomach, you know. Makes one's words frivolous when they should be grave. Plenty to digest, after all. A good deal to stew over, if you will. Words ladled with import should be savoured so as to better absorb their meaning. Wouldn't you agree? Alminster. Uh, right. Um, you see, I, um, well, that is to say, Gail, my boy, I've come to address a most pressing matter. I'll speak as plainly as I can. Forswearing the accustomed frills that decorate my speech. I'm here on behalf of Mistra. The message and the charge I bring you are hers. The long-awaited question. Now, if you please, Elminster, for the too long awaited answer. You know where you went wrong, Gail. And I trust you told your fellow traveler here the nature of your ills. I can't say that so far I volunteered uh, the entire truth. Do you mean to say you've never bothered to disclose how dangerous you are? Not in so many words. No. Then you two have much to discuss after I'll have taken my leave. In short, Gale, through his own doing, has become a living explosive that could wipe from this world this very gathering, and, and much more besides. For his folly, Mistra forsook him, but now she has decreed he is to be given a chance of redemption. Mistra would consider Forgiveness? She would consider what she considers to be forgiveness. Mistra is aware of the misadventures that have befallen you both. She knows of your strife with the Absolute, that most insidious of evils. By circumstance, but not by purpose, I swear. I never intended you any harm. His acts were misguided, yes, but I assure you that deep down he has a heart of, well, let's say, at least silver, which is more than can be said for the foe you face. You must know that the absolute is more dangerous than you can possibly conceive. It threatens all who live, even those who are undying. It threatens the gods, the weave, the very fabric of the universe itself. That is why I have come here to charge you, Gale, with its destruction. It is Mistress' belief that only you can. I doubt not your conviction, but Gale has an unnatural advantage. The orb. Precisely. That which renders him so dangerous 
is an orb of Netherese origin that is buried within his chest. And that, Gale, is how we arrive at the heart of my directive. Mistra has granted me the power to stop the clock, as it were, on the orb's rush to overpower you. Instead, you will be able to unleash its lethal combustion at will. Interesting. This could be help or hindrance. We shall have to see. You must find the heart of the absolute, whatever that may be, and use yourself as the uh, catalyst that will burn it from this world. I may be slow to anger, but I will not have you sully this moment of most sorrowful import with ill-considered levity. It's all right, Elminster. If ever Gallo's humor were appropriate, this is its grim, smiling hour. It brings me no pleasure saying this, my friend, but such is Mistra's will. Yours must be the sacrifice that will undo the absolute, and for your sacrifice, you will be redeemed. Such is Mistra's promise. With that, I've said my sorry piece, and need only bestow unto thee the charm I was bid. My nahastra mistra Italian Thras Annas It is done. Both charge and charm have been committed into your care. To you, I commit into care Gale himself. I count on you to shepherd him well on this strangest of journeys. Or some other fortune altogether. Like moons make swell and wane the nescient seas, so too the sky-strewn gods ordain the tidal fates of mortal days. And yet, a notion born in lonely hours, come ebb, come flow, come all that is beyond the breadth of our dominion, be a moon unto yourself. Even the waves of fate can break upon the shores of will. Farewell, my friend. Farewell, Elminster. I'm glad she chose you. An audience with Elminster is never less than memorable. I suppose it's time we dealt with the Hollyphant in the room. You have questions for me? And I promise I have answers. I'm sorry, and I assure you, you were never at risk. However, the cause of my condition is... complicated. I'm what one might call a wizard prodigy, who from an early age could not only control the weave, but compose it, much like a musician or a poet. Such was my skill that it earned me the attention of the mother of magic herself, the Lady of Mysteries, the goddess Mistra. She revealed herself to me and she became my teacher. In time, she became my muse, and later even my lover. Oh, yes. We enjoyed each other's company. 
body, mind, and soul. But even so, I desired more. You see, no matter how powerful a wizard we mortals can become, we never scratch more than the surface of the weave. Mistra keeps us in check. There are boundaries she doesn't let us cross. Yet, every time I was with her, I stood on the precipice, gazing into the wonders that lay beyond. I sought to cross her boundaries. I tried to convince her. I pouted. I pleaded. I swore my ambition was only to serve her better. But she only smiled and told me to be contented. But inconceivable as it seems to me now, I shared a bed with a goddess, and yet I wasn't satisfied. So I sought to prove myself worthy to her instead. We come now to the crux of my folly. Shall I share the story behind it, or would you rather head straight to its sordid finale? Suffice it to say, I obtained an obscure and ancient book that had locked away inside a much coveted prize. It was a fragment of primal weave locked out of time, locked away from Mistra herself. What if, I thought, what if, after all this time, I could return this lost part of herself to the goddess? I was certain that this deed of raw power, draped in romance, would convince Mistra to take me by the hand and welcome me into her hitherto forbidden domains. I was mistaken. I obtained the fabled book and took it into my study. As for what happened next, here, place your hand over my heart. Let me show you. You feel the tadpole quiver as you realize Gale is letting you in into the dark. You see through Gale's eyes, staring down the corridors of a dread man. A book bound and suddenly opened. Inside there are no pages, only a swirling mass of blackest weave that pounces. Its teeth, its claws, it's unstoppable as it digs through and becomes part of you. And gods, is it ever hungry? Terrifying, isn't it? And that is only the beginning. This netherese blight, this orb, for lack of a better word, is balled up inside my chest. And it needs to be fed. As long as I absorb traces of the weave from potent enough sources, it remains quiet. Or it ever to fully destabilize, however. Rather worse, actually. I will erupt. I don't know the exact magnitude of the eruption, but given my studies of Netherese magic, I'd say even a fragment as small as the one I carry, it would level a city the size of Waterdeep. Fortunately, this need no longer be a concern. Not until I meet the heart of the Absolute, whatever that is. On it.
Nothing. Both animals look fine. That orb seems powerful. What can it do once it's extracted? Nothing good can come of it unless it is contained. Why? It might be useful. Who knows? darkness it hurts you must feel it too ah uh, are you the true soul I'll take that as a yes listen up grab a torch Stay out of the dark and move fast. The shadows have eyes. Go on. pile of belongings, forsaken to the curse, so that their owners could escape with their lives. I admire your courage, Gail. Thank you. Any particular reason? Between the orb and the bug, you've got more than your fair share of unwelcome passengers. What can I say? Mother always told me to be a gracious host. <laughs> hey, boy! You want the bone? Fish! <laughs> See that blight of coat? Swallowed all by the shadow curse. Bet it was pure tasty. You're the true soul we're taking to Moonrise, I'm guessing. Right you are. Go through and talk to Kansif. He's been waiting. Anything for a true soul. 
put in a good word for me at Moonrise, eh? Hey?
is my happy place. for this.
times over, pet. What do you want, Mizora? Drop the attitude and perk up your ears. You've got a new mission. Absolute's cult has gone and grabbed one of Zariel's assets. A devil, and a powerful one at that. They're locked up in the cult's fortress, Moonrise Towers, and you're getting them out. <clears throat> Clause Z, Section 13. Should promised soul refuse obeyance or neglect duty, the pact holder shall cast the promised into a vernus as a lemur. I'll make it simple. Will fails or refuses, and he turns to a thick blob of stink flesh and sinks to a vernus. Now, be a good boy and play fetch, pup, or you'll spend an eternity sizzling in the hells. Mizora's words may be flippant, but they are tinged with desperation. She cannot afford for Will to fail this mission. This may be your best chance to negotiate Will out of his pact. Oh, and what condition is that? Your mind links with Will's, drawn in by his increasing panic. What are you doing? Will relaxes, and your connection fades. Interesting. Now, why should I go letting my favorite pet off his leash? of no way to void a devil's pact. I've never seen such a fearless display of sheer idiocy. Bravo! <laughs> Fine. I'll play your game. But I amend the pact once the mission's done, not before. Clause F, Section 9. Soulbinder shall bestow reward or favor only upon soul bearer's fulfillment of related obligation. Now, to Moonrise, pet. And do mind the shadows. They've been especially hungry. This place, these shadows, I don't seem to be affected. Not as badly, anyway. Perhaps I shouldn't put it to the test, but compared to everyone else, I feel fine. Better than fine. Do you know what this means? I must be blessed. Lady Shah is protecting me where others are left to face her wrath. She loves me. She must do. Carried away? Hardly. The proof is right there. 
Just be grateful someone can handle this place. Lady Shah wouldn't bless me like this for no reason. There must be something she wants of me. The Shadowfell, her domain, has power here. Whatever the Dark Lady needs of me, I'll wager the answer lies wherever her power is strongest. I need to find that place. See what awaits me. The more bullshit she pours, the more of it I'm forced to swallow. Mazora set me on fiends inside and outside the Hells. She's never ordered a rescue. Gods. She makes a mockery of everything the Blade stands for. Such an asshole. Thank you for sticking your neck out for me. I mean it, but I'm not going to celebrate till I'm actually free. Can already feel her scheming. She won't let me go without a fuss. Trust me on this. Not just rot. I'd have to fight. One of those mindless blobs clawing at demons on the front lines of the blood war. And it means everything to me. I always knew what my future held, and I know I chose right. <clears throat> it's said that anyone who bathes in the river of blood emerges as one born anew. It's a lot like that, I imagine. I feel the weight of these horns on my head, curling upwards like a mammoth's tusks. I feel these ridges snaking down my neck. Not to mention a few bumps and prongs in unmentionable places. But I haven't seen my reflection just yet. Be my mirror. What do you see? Then I'll fight ever harder. Be ever stronger. Till my deeds eclipse my appearance. The people will see a curiosity. Maybe even a beast hungry for their souls. But I will slay their monsters, keep them safe. And one day they will see the Blade of Frontiers again. This dark land must be filled with the broken, the beaten, the desperate. The perfect praying ground for a devil who offers a way out for those who sign on the dotted line. I hope we end up seeing our friend Raphael down here somewhere. Help me find him and you'll find out. When I was taken to his house, I was caught off guard. But now, now I know what to ask for. Perfect! I knew you would understand. What do we have here? The voice of the Absolute is strong here, and getting stronger. I don't know how much longer I can resist it. But it's good to see you're making progress. You took an unexpected route here. You did a brave thing. Saving those people in the grove. Not everyone would have helped. It 
just doesn't stop. We are being bombarded by waves of telepathic energy. Wave after wave with hardly a breath between them. I almost dare not rest. Each wave a set of orders to the infected. The order for your transformation has been given many times already. Yes, but the orders are oddly erratic, as if the Absolute cannot make up its mind. I don't fully understand. In any case, the Absolute knows you carry me with you now. It wants to retrieve me. I am the only one who can resist the Absolute's influence. Hence its fear of me, its... its desperation. Unfortunately, that also means it is dedicating more and more resources to my retrieval. The task ahead is monumental, but we're all that stands between victory for the Absolute and freedom for all. This is not just about you and I anymore. It has become far bigger than us. You must infiltrate Moonrise Towers, discover the secrets of the Absolute, and put an end to it. So we can finally be free. Now I must rest. And you must carry on. Do not let my efforts be in vain. desire.
one for another. True soul. An honor. Did you bring the liar? We were told to expect a true soul. That Night Warden Mintharo would send someone with her liar to summon a guide through the darkness. I admit, I'm surprised a true soul does not know this. Where are you headed, exactly? Ah, you do have it. Then pluck a tube, and our guide will come scuttling. Them, your majesty, calling us their god and their guide together. By the gods, one of Lolth's abominations. Greetings, and the Absolute's name. You have been charged with guiding us. New flesh for you, my queen. But who are they? Best introduce yourself. Perhaps you'll listen to her true soul. And you... What are you? More faithful of the Absolute. They need a guide to the Tower, same as us. Your minds connect, and you hear a whispered voice. The Absolute, or just the echoes of his fractured mind reverberating in the dark. <laughs> A true soul. You have more worshippers every day, Majesty. Get that lantern! Hell attacks! Villains in the dark! 
These Harpers are clearly enemies of the Absolute. They could be worthwhile allies. But defend the guide and you may preserve your cover as a true soul. Kill them! Tear the Aliens to pieces! Absolute wills it so. Got it.
in your name, Majesty! little things. No better than the shadows. But no matter, Majesty, they are already dead and soon forgotten. You notice something odd on the fallen soldier. A faint glow about the face, like an aura fast fading. You can feel the power it held. Weak, but still divine. These soldiers were protected from the shadows by a blessing of Saluna. All dead, Majesty. It is time for us to move on. Their gods are weaker. None compare to the absolute. They will hurry, Majesty. They will not keep you waiting. Need a word. They must get on. They must hurry. Majesty. But they will stop us. They can't stop us! Come back! We must stay Ooh. in the Majesty. Skin. Afraid of the dark? In this place, only a fool would beat. Come back! You must stay in the Turn to the light!
I'm back! Shadows are darkest here, hungriest here. Do not stray from the light, no matter what they promise you. Come back! You must stay in the light, Majesty. There's the tower now, big lad. Your bridge is still clean. My blade is, but that can change. Just keep talking. They will be silent. They approach your sanctuary. Moonrise Towers Just... lies ahead. We're nearing the heart of the absent. We're close. I can feel it. The absolute. Its power is strong here. New meat drider. <laughs> oh, the queen sent them. Her Majesty's flesh grows full and glorious. Move. His thoughts seek yours, searching, grasping. Your parasite squirms in recognition. Disciples or else in the Great Hall. She'll be wanting to see you. Rest of you, head on in. The others will go in, but I will go up. My queen summons me to her chapel to be in her presence. I hear you, sweet majesty. I am coming, the queen. Is the place. This is where we'll discover the secret of the absolute.
That's right. It'll take a while for us all to recover, but you've helped us take the first step. Of course. Defender of the people. Yes? May you keep balance.
If you insist. Oh. Someone there. Tread carefully. Oh. Oh. Ignis! What now? Watch the shadows. Where am I needed? Best foot four. for a wizard in need. Engineer. Good evening. I'm here on behalf of Gale of Waterdeep. He wishes to extend you an invitation for a private conversation in a more suitable locale. Gladly. Simply follow yonder path and soon you will find him.
I love this time of night. There's an almost reverent silence that accompanies the peak of darkness, when you'd almost believe the dawn will never break. The cradle of eternity. The timelessness of lovers. That most beautiful of fantasies. I wanted to see you while I still could. This may be my last night alive. I wanted it to be under a canopy of beauty and wonder. I thought this place might bring me peace. I thought it might make the weight of what I must do feel a little lighter. But I'm not so sure. Babe or crone, coward or hero, death is assured. Mistra's forgiveness is not. If you knew the end was near, would you not want to ensure it had meaning? I am terrified. I will not claim otherwise. My face could scarcely conceal it, even if my words sought to deny it. There is no point in running from the inevitable. Better to meet it on my own terms. Your words are those of a dear friend, or a lover even. But this is no time for delusions. Fate threw us together, and mutual survival kept us together. Those bonds will soon break. But you were a worthy ally and could have become much more in other circumstances. Let us enjoy the view together. We will leave the world a better place than it is tonight. dog wags his tail, a small bag clenched between his teeth. He gives in and surrenders his find to you. Scratch's tongue lolls out happily, his tail wagging even faster. I was hoping to speak to you, as a matter of fact, about the night you were kind enough to keep this melancholy wizard company. I wanted to... to thank you. I was sinking into a dark place, but you reminded me there is still light in the world, if I should care to look for it. You... you may well have prevented me from doing something very rash in the near future. I count myself lucky to call you a friend. I'm glad to hear it. And I intend to prove myself worthy of the sentiment. She expects those who seek to use the weave to do so honestly and with respect for its potential to destroy. 
as well as its potential to save. I doubt she's asked many of her followers to blow themselves up. That's a fate she's bequeathed exclusively to me. She wouldn't ask such a thing if it weren't our only means of survival. However much she's annoyed at me. I've no doubt she has the power to do so, but as for the permission, Ao would not look kindly on her meddling in mortal affairs. Divine intervention has a tendency to make things worse, not better. As for Elminster, he saved the realms more times than legend can recount. But to take on a god is no easy feat, even for him. My orb is the best chance we have. And only I can wield it. Uh... <sighs> 